If you cannot adapt, you will not survive. You will not survive if you cannot adapt. And you adapt by manifesting the nature of Jesus Christ in everything you do, everything you think, say, and do. You must resist your fallen nature or you will not survive. You can know this doctrine from A to Z and you will not survive. If you cannot hear from, if you, if you cannot be motivated by the mind of Christ in the crisis, you will not survive. And if you think that you're going to live out of your carnal mind today and manifest the mind of Christ in the crisis, you are mistaken. Because in the crisis, in the crisis, that's how you know who you are. How you act in the crisis, that's how you know who you are. So think about the latest crisis you've had in your life. And if you have defaulted to your carnal mind because of the stress, you need to get before God. I'm not here to condemn you today. I'm trying to save you. You need to get before God and confess it is sin and beg him to help you. What do you do under pressure? That's who you are. See? That's who you are. The way you act under pressure, that's who you are. But God can change you. I'm telling you so that you can change. So, we have Planned Parenthood cutting up babies. And there's a big fight in Congress because oh, our Senate doesn't want to defund them. What? What? It's all about the money, brethren. There are people making, there are very rich people making a lot of money without any morality. It's just the money. And we've been sold down the river and the people have not done their part. Now they're pouring immigrants into the nation that don't even speak English. How are they supposed to vote when they don't even speak English? Democracy was set up for an educated public. So we're in a lot of trouble. And I, we should not stop praying. We should not stop praying. But I see the momentum. I, I really don't see how this is going to stop. Other than a power equal to or greater than the power that's causing the momentum. And I don't think that the church even... Even a ministry like this, I, I don't see that we have the power. I mean, don't, don't stop praying. I don't see that we have the power. Because we're supposed to resist. We're supposed to resist to the end. But I don't see that we have the power to stop this momentum. It's too strong. Only Christ Jesus can do it. See? So he has to show up. He said very soon, and he has to show up. The whole question is, at what point is he going to show up? And when he does show up, we know he's going to kill the evil one immediately, but we don't know how long it's going to take to affect us down here. So we just don't know. Maybe you know, but I don't know. Maybe there's someone out there that knows, but I don't know. And God hasn't told me. But, but back to Glenn Beck for a minute. What wants me to get back to Glenn Beck? I, I, I think if anything comes out about Glenn Beck right now, it's going to be new to me. Because the Lord's been laying it on my heart, and he just told me to come back to Glenn Beck. So there's something I, I don't know. Maybe the Lord will reveal it. He was Glenn Beck warning Christians not to align themselves with Putin. Because he appeared to be taking a Christian stand. That was the counsel. Do not align yourself with Putin because he's taking a Christian stand. It's phony. See? Well, that was then, but this is now. And I'm aligning myself with Putin. What was on Glenn's mind all the way back then? That, that was beyond the homosexual agenda. That he was warning Christians to not align themselves with Putin because he's a phony Christian or a false Christian. There's something there that the Lord wants to bring out, and it's not coming, if it doesn't come out by revelation, I, I don't know what it is. But it's about Glenn Beck. Now, I, I don't watch him that much anymore. 
but I turned him on yesterday. Actually, it was his program where I heard about of the statue of, of the of the devil. I hope it's true. He showed a picture. Yeah, I looked I looked it up on the internet. It's true. I didn't hear it on Rush Limbaugh, and I didn't hear about it on Michael Savage. And Glenn was really, really upset. So who is this man? He's a paradox. He's a contradiction. He's a contradiction. I don't know who he is. Either he's a very good actor or he was genuinely upset. And what he was saying is, by, we can no longer believe that the problem in this country is political. And it's not political. It hasn't been for years, but it's becoming more and more obvious that the, the battle is not between the Democratic and the Republican Party. It's a spiritual battle between good and evil. And evil seems to be taking the edge. So I don't know who this man is. I don't know whether he was, is just wrong on the issue of homosexuality. Maybe he's just wrong about it. And I told you the other day, I saw an article on The Blaze that seemed to be supporting transgenderism. Yet, what, 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 do you, what do you all think? Let me throw out this question to you. What do you all think about this position? Okay, his position. His position is that his church will not marry a gay couple. I don't think you can be a member of, of the Mormon church if, you, if you're living the gay life. You can be gay and not prep. It's the same thing if you're an adulterer or a fornicator. You are what you are. You cannot be a part of the church if you're living that lifestyle. Now, I don't know what the Mormon church says about that, but the Mormon church will not marry them. What do you think about this position? That he rarely, if ever, although he has on occasion, mentioned that the Mormon church, that he agrees with the Mormon church, that you cannot get... I don't even know if he agrees. He said, in my church, I guess he agrees, in my church, you cannot get married if you're gay. But he's so pro-gay that he's willing to march in the gay parade. parade. And he's so trans, because he's saying that he's a libertarian. And that everybody should be able to do what they want. And that the government should not be in the marriage business. But what do you think about his position? That he, he's out in the open, really blatantly, being pro-gay and pro-transgenderism. And he hardly ever talks about the fact that, that gays can't get married in his church. And that he does not believe in gay marriage based upon his religion. Okay. But he doesn't, he's, he's doing more than saying, well, you have the right, you have a, I'm a libertarian, you have the right to do whatever you want. He's out there promoting it like it's a good thing. Well, in his church, they won't touch it. What do you think about a man that does that? What do you think about that? I'd like everybody to give an opinion. What, what about that? He's two-faced, you know. He's two-faced. Okay. Okay. He's, and, he's, and he's also um, instructing his, his whole uh, following, all his people. He's putting them in danger mm -hmm. by his, his uh, concept. Mm -hmm. Which is which he himself which he himself doesn't follow in his private life. I, 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 he's a hypocrite. Besides, it's horrible. What what is his what is his agenda? What is his agenda? I can't believe he's stupid. He's not stupid. He's a very smart man. So see, it's not he's gone beyond saying. I won't, my, my religion won't do it, but I'm a libertarian, so you can do it if you want to. He's gone beyond that. What he's saying is, it's all, wow, listen to what he's saying. It's all right if you want to do that, but in my church, we're holy, we don't do that. Do you hear that? It's fine for the world to do it. Isn't that, isn't that what Jehovah said to national Israel? It's fine for the nations to do it, but you are a holy people. You don't do that. You don't, these are the foods that you eat. You don't do what the nations do. When God called out national Israel, there was, there was, a, there was child sacrifice. There was worship of idols. 
God never told national, well, that's not true. Uh, uh, how am I going to say that? In certain instances, Jehovah sent the Israelites in to destroy the nations, like in Canaan land. Who knows what they, they were all into this child sacrifice and evil. How, how am I going to say this? God, God destroyed those nations because of their atrocities. He used Israel to destroy them because of their atrocities. But God never touched idolatry in India. God never sent Israel in to stop idolatry. It wasn't a worldwide thing where Jehovah condemned idolatry for whatever his reason. He said, we're going to focus on Canaan in the Middle East, and you're going to wipe out these nations which are worshiping idols and burning their children. But it was not a blanket world decision that condemned idolatry and said Israel was holy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what is this coming out of the Mormon church? So anyway, but I didn't finish my point. So Glenn, he's not saying, well, you do what you want. My church won't let me do it, but you do what you want. I'm not looking. He's promoting it. He's promoting it. Mm -hmm. So what is this? And yesterday he was genuinely upset. Well, he's a very good actor. I, I don't know who the man is. Maybe he's controlled. Maybe I, I told you the other day that you can't do what he did in the few years that he did it without spiritual power behind you. So do you think God raised him up to be using his influence like this? Do you think God raised him up that he did what no human being can do with that spiritual power? That he's a, he has a news media, he's, he's, what he's done, what he's accomplished is incredible. Do you think that was the power of God? That he has now turned around and is doing this abominable, abominable thing, using his influence to, to literally spread to corrupt Christians that would think otherwise about homosexuality and transgenderism? He had that article about transgenderism right on the front page of the, of the blaze, right there. Who is this man? Do, is, is his mind corrupted? Does he really think that he's doing the right thing? Does he really think, is it, is it, did, did his pride go to his head that he thinks that he's really doing the right thing? Or is he being used by, uh, by another force? Was it not God who gave him all of this success? But be careful. Be careful. I have to talk to you also about Israel. You know, I, I want to clarify something that I said to you. I, I believe that these K's are Jews, that God has adopted them, and that they have this assignment of taking care of the Word of God. And I've told you that God will defend them. What that means what that means, that God will defend them. Okay, I've switched to the Jews now. Is everybody okay? I've switched to the Khazar Jews that have the responsibility of, of caring for the Word of God. I have told you that they're adopted and God will defend them. What that means is that God is the only one. If you're defended by God, it means God is the only one that can punish you. That's what it means. That was, what, that was the counsel of Balaam to Balak. Okay, I cannot curse Israel. God is the only one that can punish Israel. So if you want to hurt Israel, get them to sin, and then their own God will punish them. That was Balaam's counsel to Balak. And then the Midianite women came in, and God punished them. The plague hit Israel. We don't even know what the plague is, but thousands died. So... So when I said to you, God will, God will defend them, that means only God can take them out. And what is the truth about national Israel today? 50% don't even believe in God. They had gay marriage. People, gays living together openly. If they get taken out, it will be with God's permission. 
God took out Judah, God took out the northern tribes. So everything's upside down. The United States, Israel, the Middle East, uh, the government in Britain is it any better, if not worse, than our government. Corrupted, fought very far away from God. How can judgment not fall? How can it not fall? How can judgment not fall? We just have to believe that he's going to help us and have mercy on our loved ones. I, I, I don't know what to say. So the scenery is still standing. Every, look, it's a nice day out. The sun is shining. I can hear the birds chirping. It's a nice day out there. Look at what we have here. Do you know in Nigeria, where, where I live, would, in some instances would be considered a very wealthy person to, to have just this little condominium that I have in Africa, or other parts of the world. We have all this technology, cameras, lights, telephones, computers. Look at what we have here. It's all scenery, see? And I think I told you once that I had a Star Trek episode. <laughs> it so impacted me. In the Star Trek episode, it was an agrarian community. They were farmers, okay, so they didn't have modern conveniences, sort of like the the, um, the, what do they call them, the, the, in Pennsylvania, the Dutch, the Dutch, Amish, the Amish, yes. They lived, they, they lived on farms. And then one day, the sky, there was all of this noise in the sky. <laughs> and the sky started spreading and opening, and then behind it, it was like, it was like the sky was paper. And on the other side of the sky was this, was the Enterprise Starship. So the paper all broke. And peeled back, and there was the starship with all of these sophisticated uh, space travelers staring down at this agrarian society from the sky. It was very powerful. So that's this principle that I'm talking to you about. The scenery, they, said they punched a hole in the scenery. So there, there's about to be a hole punched in the scenery. And there's all kinds of possibilities as to what form it's going to take. There could be giants appearing. There could be aliens appearing. Oh, there could be World War III could start. There could be a famine. There could be fighting on our shores. What, what do I mean that the, the scenery is about to come down? It cannot continue with nice, sleepy days like this all over the country. I was in Minnesota, I was driving along the highway. It was beautiful, beautiful scenery, beautiful. Go out to eat in a restaurant. The restaurants are packed. I thought we were in a recession. The restaurants are packed. More food than you can eat. It, it can't continue because it's a paradox. The life that we see doesn't line up with the reality of what's happening in the world today. The life that we see of prosperity doesn't line up with the child sex slave business trade. The child sex trade. It doesn't line up with all the, with all the drug trade. It doesn't line up. What you see when you drive through the countryside and the condition of the people don't line up, it's a paradox. And when you have a paradox, one must be taken and one must be left. One, one is going to dry up and die, and the other side is going to take over the scenery and the reality. The scripture says, everything that's hidden will be made manifest. I was reading in Isaiah this morning, and I was very surprised to find a scripture that said that if people are unjustly, in, I don't know what the exact word was, enslaved or in jail, 
that if there's anything we, that we, we need to oppose it in our heart, and if there's anything that we could possibly do, we need to do it. If they're unjustly in prison. I have to tell you that I never knew that there was a scriptural foundation for the days when our military was righteous. And we went overseas to, to rescue people that were being abused by criminal governments. I didn't know that, it was, that there was a scriptural justification for it. There's a scriptural justification for it. God is for the underdog. But it's for the underdog out of the spirit of righteousness. Be very careful that you're not for the underdog out of your carnal mind. So, America, the great America, we're no longer fulfilling the purpose for which we were, we were great. You know? And nothing is like it seems, you see. And I heard Glenn Beck say something on his show about the greatness of this country and all of, all of the techn technology and all that. Now, I know, and I've taught you here, so I don't know whether you agree with me or not, but I know that all of this technology has come from the aliens. For years I said that, well, God has just raised, look at what God has done so that all of this technology, so that we can study the Bible more easily, you know, that God, God has done this, you know. God didn't do this. All of this technology of this modern world has come from the aliens, from the, the scientists that we get amnesty to at the end of, the German scientists that we get amnesty to at the end of World War II. Nothing is as it seems. And if you don't adapt, you won't survive. What does that mean? It means you have to see truth. You have to see God for truth. Because if you can't, if you, if, you, if you don't have the truth, the conflict can actually give you a heart attack. Now years ago, years ago when God was first starting me, years ago, when God was first starting me on this journey, and I saw this contradiction, this paradox, it was really upsetting me because I couldn't make any, I have a very logical mind. And I couldn't make any sense out of the paradox. I saw the contradiction. I couldn't make any sense out of it. And it was tormenting to me. And then the Lord started to teach me, saying to me, I remember the first time I, I, I my recollection of him teaching me along these lines, saying, why are you surprised? Why are you surprised that this contradiction exists? And I didn't even know what he meant when he told me that. He's been teaching me for years. Now, when I see a paradox, I don't, I don't get upset like that because I understand that it's a paradox, that it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense that there's evil in this world. How could it make sense that there's such evil in this world as child sacrifice when God made this world? Somebody solved the paradox for me. I want somebody in this ministry to solve the paradox for me. Here's the paradox. How can there be true evil in this world, such as satanic sacrifice and child sacrifice and, and the child slave uh, sex trade? How can such evil exist in a world that God created? Somebody in this ministry solved the paradox for me. Explain it to me. Somebody. That God didn't create this world. God didn't create this world. But the whole church believes that God created this world. All the religions of the world believe that God created this world. So if you cannot adapt, you won't survive. You need to know that God didn't create this world. That's what adaption is. That's what adap adap adaptation is. Because the conflict will kill you. Eventually, it will cause you, I'm telling you, it will make you sick or give you a heart attack. If you're really looking, if you're truly looking at both sides, the conflict will make you sick and eventually kill you. Now, if you're in denial and you blot it out, that's not what I'm talking about. See? The conflict will destroy your mind and your health and your life eventually. You have to adapt. Adapt means facing the truth. The truth always solves the problem. 
truth either proves one, one, one position wrong or the truth provides additional information that reconciles the two conflicting or competing ideas. If you continue to think the way you thought 20, 30, or 40 years ago, and you're not recognizing that the world has changed or that the person that you're thinking about that, that about has changed, there will, destruction will come into your life. Because the, the truth will not tolerate the lie. If you're harboring a lie in your mind and something has changed, either a person or a nation or an entity or an organization, a corporation, a church, if they're not what they used to be, but you still harbor an, a false idea, whether, whether they change or whether you just have a false idea in your heart and your mind. It cannot continue that you will believe the lie and then the truth will exist. It cannot continue. There will be a conflict. You must believe one or the other. If you continue to believe the lie, you go into denial and it will produce destruction in your life. Somehow it will produce destruction in your life. If, if it's a church, okay, eventually you'll have to leave the church. If you're believing something that's, that, that the church is not, there will be a conflict at some point which will result in you having to leave the church. If it's a relationship that you have and you're believing that that person is something that they're not, at some point it's going to destroy the relationship. A marriage, a friend with your children, and you will be alone with your lie. One was in, two in the field, one was taken and one was left. Two grinding at the mill, one was taken and one was left. The lie cannot abide with the truth indefinitely. Either the person believing the lie will adapt and start to believe the truth, or there will be destruction in that area of their life. Maybe it's in your marriage, and it won't break up your marriage, but do you know that people can be mentally and emotionally divorced and still live together for the rest of their lives? That they can live in the same house and be total strangers, not knowing what the other person thinks or believes or cares about, that they just live there and go through the motions of working and raising the children, and they don't know anything about the, the, the emotions or the heart or the inner thoughts of their partner. Do you know that there are a lot of marriages like that? That's destruction while the scenery continues. The illusion of a marriage because the two bodies live in the same house. The truth and the lie cannot coexist. And if you don't adapt by giving up the lie and starting to believe the truth, you will suffer loss. Whether it's on the smallest area of a personal relationship or on the major area of your country or the world. So, this, um, this lie that I guess all of us have it to some degree in our mind, uh, this re resistance to change. It's a manifestation of pride. We all need to know that. Everything that is not of faith is sin, and most likely the sin of pride. Everything that blocks the truth is pride. There are subdivisions of pride. But every time you think, and it's not with the mind of Christ, it's pride. And the Lord wanted me to bring this to your attention today. Actually, I had it on my heart, and I guess I'm going to do it. I guess the Lord wants me to do it. I would like everybody here to share with the, the brethren how one way that you know of that pride manifests in your life. And I will start. I want everybody that's in this meeting And it's not that I'm trying to expose you, it's that I'm wondering if you are recognizing pride in your own psyche. That's what this is about. So I will start. 
I, uh, the, the most major manifestation of pride in my life today is that I am having trouble um, um, I, I, I lead a double life. I, have, I, am, I am developed spiritually to the point that I could literally spend hours a day in the things of God and I, I get frustrated and I get angry because frustration is anger that I have to stop being spiritual and settle down to the office work. I, I resent it. Uh, I don't like it. It gets me angry. Uh, I, if, I, if, I, if I wasn't who I am, I, I, it's a nice job. You know, I like working on computers and all of that. But I, I have not been able to take the victory of being a happy person and walking around the house singing when I'm doing office work. I'm unhappy. I pray about it a lot, so that's the spirit of pride, because Paul said, be content in everything that you do. So I'm confessing that as the sin of pride. I'm hoping for God to help me to, to not be frustrated, because I wake up in the morning, and usually when I wake up in the morning, I'm, I'm spiritual, and I, I just have to go to work. So that's, that's what I'm confessing right now, and I would like everybody here to identify some manifestation of pride in your life. Who's going to go first? With me, I'd say it's the stress of trying to do something that I know in my heart I'm not equipped, adequate to do. So what, exactly what is pride? Trying to do something I'm not anointed for, I guess, so I, guess I don't know if it, Put, how to put it a better way. So the stress, the frustration. So you have the same issue as I do. The frustration is pride. But I, I keep trying. Is that pride? Well, it depends on whether or not God's telling you to try. But why well, I, I'm in that position to do it, so it's not, not a choice of mine. So I feel it has to be him. And I just have to adapt the best I know how. But you're not happy then. You're frustrated. I feel weak. I'm okay. That that's similar. I feel to more of a burden than a help. To be real honest, in, okay. in that aspect, a burden. Well, I could say the same thing. That uh, I feel the office work is a burden to me, but I do it because obviously it has to be done. Now Mary says she says she's not capable of it. I am capable. Well, to be honest with you, there are a lot of things that I do that I'm not capable of. That I only succeed because God helps me. I mean, I am the IT person here <laughs> with all the computers and uh, and uh, there are lots of times that I don't know what to do and I have to pray it through until I get an answer and that's very frustrating to me. So Mary and I have something in common here. Okay, do you understand that that's pride, Mary? I feel more like it's guilt that I, I'm not pulling my own weight. Okay. I guess that's another aspect of pride too, I guess, you know? Yes, that's pride too. Okay, who's next? I hope there's nobody here that thinks they don't have any pride. <laughs> who's next? You want to go next? Yeah, I, I don't know what the, how many things that I've done and it's all pride. It just seems like... Well, try naming one. Because <sighs> that's the danger, just making yeah. it general, then you never yeah. get over it. Yeah. Well, I guess lying which has come about, mm -hmm. and, and, um... And why do you lie? Uh, what is your motive for lying? Uh, maybe fear of being exposed. Fear. Fear, fear is pride. Yeah. Yeah. When fear motivates you, lie is just the symptom. Yeah. Fear motivates you, and then you lie. So fear is, the, big, is, is a, big, a big issue. Yeah. Because I know I have it so, so do, much. Do you rebuke fear every day? No. You need to be with looking at every day. Okay. Okay. Susan? Um, I guess two things. The um, fear of rejection. Um, maybe I, I won't speak my my thoughts <clears throat> for fear that, that the person would reject me and maybe that would even hinder Christ speaking through me. Um, and uh, 
and then also just not not admitting my uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, I, I mean, we, we spoke about this having a, a, a sense of strength hiding my uh, I guess in, inadequacies or, or things that I, I all my feelings and stuff just you know, push a, it that's push it down that's a line spirit yeah P push it down muscle through get it get it done and don't deal with the fact that there was a, a hurt or, or something so mm -hmm. just just denying that that fact mm -hmm. okay yeah. um let's see nobody wrote in who's there and hey margaret uh, rose sandra sandra's on the phone And you're going to join us, Margaret and Latin. And Rose. I just lost. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, hey Sandra, yes. We we can hear you. Um I think one of my manifestations of pride would be definitely fear with regards to my kids, and I think it's just, um, I've just had a lot of pain, and I, I, I guess I, I don't want them to experience the same pain, but the sad thing is that it's the pain that's made me, given me the strength that I have today, and so um, I just, I, I manifest fear, and to try to protect them from, from pain, so um, it, it, you know, it inter, it inter um, interferes with my marriage and, you know, just decisions of giving up the control mm -hmm. over my kids and giving them up to their own decision-making processes. And um, so, you know, it's, it's a big struggle and it's just really been brought out, especially over your visit here. So, uh, yeah, one of the major things I'm dealing with right now. Okay, so we have... Three of the brethren manifesting fear and two of us manifesting frustration over God requiring us to do things that we're really not capable of doing, but which we are capable of in Him. <laughs> okay, is anyone else participating? Margaret and Lapa, you're not participating? No, they're not. Maybe they're logged in, but maybe the, the chat isn't working. Okay. Okay, um, okay, I guess, does anybody have any questions about this, this message? It was a practical message. It was also a state of the country and a state of the world message, and it was also another warning about Glenn Beck, that this guy is so believable, so very believable, you know, that he's concerned about the country and all upset about that statue of the devil going up on the Detroit River and warning us that it's a spiritual war on the one hand and on the other hand he's spreading a gospel that will surely separate anyone who believes it from their God. What is he up to? There's a lot of deception at him. I mean, it's some pretty similar to the cover-up in the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, and I'm teaching about their doctrine and about their own sins, and just looking out at other sins. If they accept anything on the outside, so it won't be looked at themselves. And you're talking about the homosexual. And one of the things, because they marry and things, I know different sects don't do that, but don't do what Mary. Don't marry, have multiple wives, polygamy, and all that. So oh, you took There's a you, lot of incest in there. There's a lot of unclean spirits there, and doctrines yeah. are wrong to begin with. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. There really is deception there because lots of it. He calls himself a Mormon Christian. I found an article on the internet calling him a, the a born again Mormon Christian. And, there's, and he, he, he takes the position that, our do, that, the, that it's just doctrine, and that doctrine doesn't mean anything. 
and he calls himself a Christian, and all of his programs are, are Pentecostal. Every program that he's ever set up, he's had born-again Christians there with, that have brought down the anointing, because God will bring down the anointing when the people are there in faith. And everything he's ever done looks Christian. He's never done anything that looks Mormon. The only thing that betrays his Mormonism is that he believes in, um, in having food stored, and that is a Mormon thing, but it's not only a Mormon thing. So he really is presenting a false image of who he is. <laughs> and that is really true. He never talks about the... I remember when, um, it was a couple of years ago, he felt the necessity of, of saying something about his Mormonism. And I was really disappointed, because well, he announced it when I listened to the program. I was really disappointed because he didn't touch on the, when Romney was running. He said, people want to know what Mormonism is. And he gave a few points, but he didn't touch on the doctrine. And then he must have been questioned on it. He said, well, I don't really know the doctrine well enough to talk about it. So, but doctrine is everything. So he's a complete phony, brethren. He is a complete phony, hiding the truth of who and what he is. And you can't tell me he doesn't know anything about Mormon doctrine. You know? uh, and he's also a 16th degree Mason, and he's a member of Skull and Bones, apparently. You know? Must be an honorary member because he didn't go to Yale. At least he was wearing the skull and there's a picture of him, unless it was Photoshop, wearing the skull and bone, bones uh, pressed. So he's a complete two faced liar. So, how could you believe anything that he does if he sees such a phony? And I believed him. Well, he still provides good news. I still think he provides good news and good, good political opinion. I believe that. But you have to ask yourself what his agenda is okay. that, he present, that he presents himself to be a born-again Christian and he's a Mormon. What, what is he up to? He's hiding something in his own Mormonism. Well, what is Mormon. he hiding? I, you know, with all this, uh, the plates in the, uh, you know, that, that they, they know about the plates that are hidden in the ground and they're supposed to be exposed Mm -hmm. somehow soon or, or whatever maybe that's supposed to be all hidden that he doesn't want to he doesn't want to be questioned about that Mormon religion that, that's, that's the only thing I can it's not possible that he doesn't know anything about it he's deliberately you know, yeah, well, he's deliberately not not saying one word about his Mormonism everything that he says is Christian born again Christian so yeah. it could be a, a hidden thing. About, I know. You know, I don't know. I, mean, who he is. I know. When I was out there that time, they said that they said that these plates were going to be come be a, a, a big. Uh, You're going to be dug up. Well, Susan yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's got to be something to that. That that's all I can think of when when he's he's so and so, so many contradictions. Because you know the, the, there is pro well. There, there is doctrine in the Mormon Church that they expect the whole country to turn Mormon. Mm. The doctrine was that there was supposed to be a Mormon president who would save the world, be elected and save, save the country when, when it was on its last thread and then the whole country would turn Mormon. You know? So is he promoting a Mormon gen agenda and lying about what they are? Or is, is it a, a Mason thing? Or what in the world is he? aside from a lawyer and, and, and a deceiver. He is not what he presents himself to be at all. If you're a Mormon, how about letting us know that you're a Mormon? Say something Mormon once in a while. So, um, there was something else the Lord just put to my mind tonight. It's very warm in here, is it not? <laughs> Isn't that hot outside? It's, a nice, it's supposed to be a nice day, not incredible. Well, we're the air conditioner on. Uh, they, they were somehow. Oh, okay, let's hear it. Um, you should probably read Rita's first, because Rita commented, I don't know if the chat came in late or this was a late comment about something in the beginning, and then go back up till that day. Rita says, the statue Muhammad, one website was explaining the word Baponit is a dis decoded word for Sophia. Interesting. 
Really? Behemoth. I think the word is like behemoth. That's supposed to mean the devil. Oh, she, was she just meaning behemoth by that word? Okay. It is a coded word for wisdom. Because I was trying to read it. Okay. That's interesting that we're preaching about Sophia now. Yeah. Uh, La Pay says, I feel that I would like to be more communicative, less shy, frustrated that I find it difficult to open up and be free to talk and share my feelings. Okay. It's, it's all pride, yes. Is that all? It's all, it's all pride. Okay. Uh, there was another issue that the Lord just reminded me of, and I lost it again. What is it, Lord? That Glenn Beck, he's just really dangerous. I just don't know who he is. I'm sorry, why well, I lost it. Well, I, I thought that there was something to what you were saying, that he was accepting all of these sinful practices because he and his church are holy. Like when you well, said that's, something like that, the, and it grabbed yeah. me that... Well, that's the su suggestion. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's good, and um, he's doing this under the umbrella <laughs> of being a libertarian. A libertarian says, you do whatever you want. The government shouldn't be in marriage. You do whatever you want. But he's doing more than that. He even said he would march in the gay parade, you know. Because to sure. yeah, yeah, Rita, can you just hold on a second, please? I'm, I'm, I was in the middle of a sentence. Just hang on, we'll get to you. So he was saying at one point that he would march in the gay parade to prove to to show his support for their right to do whatever they want to do. But there's something really wrong with that because we're talking about a moral issue. We're not when when we what, what we have in this country is free, or we're supposed to have free political speech. You're supposed to be able to believe whatever you want politically without being afraid that the king is going to kill you. <laughs> and homosexuality is a moral issue. And you're not free to do whatever you want. It's a moral issue. So it's a real confusion there. And he's not just saying, okay, brother, go in peace and do whatever you want to do. He's promoting it. Something yeah, is yeah. really, yeah. really wrong. Something's really wrong. And he's hiding what it means to be a Mormon and telling everybody that he's the same as other Christian denominations. And something is really wrong. And I have a problem that it would be the spirit of the Lord that would raise up his kingdom because he has, a, he has an empire there. He has an empire there. I have, a, I have trouble believing that it was the spirit of God that would raise up such an empire. For a deceiver, I, I, I can't believe that. I'm, uh, something's really right. I want to pray that he should be exposed in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray that Glenn, the true motive and the true person behind Glenn Beck should be exposed for the whole world to see in Jesus' name. And if there's anything else you want to reveal in this meeting, we're all here waiting to hear it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Rita, what did you want to say? Well, I wanted to say that the statue that you were talking about is not, I wasn't saying behemoth, that's one reason I called, I'm not saying behemoth. The, the statue that you're talking about in Detroit by the river is is a baphomet. No, it's, I, it's I, a, I didn't think it was behemoth. A, How are you pronouncing uh, it? I, I never said it was behemoth. It was behemoth. Be, what, what are you saying the name is? It's something with a B. What are you saying the name is? Yeah, it has a, it has a goat head on it. It's a Baphomet. Ba Baphomet. Um, how do you spell that? B-A-P-H-O-M-E-T. Baphomet. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, and, it's, and, and they said it, it, that one of the reasons that it kind of got into Dan Brown's book, Da Vinci Code, it was a, it was that book was a thriller for some. It, it was a decoded word for Sophia. Sophia lives them. I just wanted to tell you that. I thought that was very interesting. That is very interesting. Because here they, they, they erected this thing and here, we, here you are teaching us about Sophia. So, but, but I don't see how Baphomet, how they get that out of wisdom. Do you see how they, how, what, what do the two, is a decoded yeah. word? How do you decode wisdom into Baphomet? I guess you don't know the answer to that. I don't know because I haven't looked that up, no. Yeah. 
But it's very. But I found that very interesting on that site that I'm looking at. Yes, very interesting that that we preached it and now that, and I think that there are going to be more and more Christians seduced by this uh, female wisdom because uh, it, it cannot be any accident that the Lord has raised this up in the book. And the book, brethren, is almost ready to go to print. Did you get my email about one or two things left to do? Yeah. It probably will be ready to go to print to, uh, uh, like tomorrow. After probably Susan will have it fixed up tomorrow, and um, then it just take, we just submit it. It takes 24 hours, and then it, it should be available by the weekend. Actually, that's just one little thing to do. So it should be tomorrow's Friday, Saturday. It should be up on on the web. Uh, so it's just really interesting. Yes, yes. They really, I mean, they, we really, there really is a spiritual war going on, but it seems like so few people can see the Lord's side. I mean, I have to tell you, our books have not been discovered yet. Everything that we publish, we publish it through Amazon, and Amazon advertises it all, all across, all across the world. Wherever there's an Amazon website, which is pretty much all across the world, our books are listed. Of someone, I mean, if someone looks up that topic, or God is capable of bringing it up in the search results whenever He wants to, and there hasn't been any response yet, either, either to our printed books or to our Kindle books, so it it hasn't caught on yet. We haven't been revealed yet, you know, but still something's happening in the spirit that we that the Lord should have us uh, produce this book, and now. Uh, I don't know why I can't pronounce that name, Raphahet, whatever it is, I can't pronounce it. That that statue is raised up. The war is raging. The war is rage, raging, but the army of the Lord is, is teeny tiny, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if this was the issue that I had on my mind, but the Lord did want me to mention this to you also. Uh, at the beginning, I think it was the last message that I preached, I told you that I was late because I was listening, it was Sunday, that I was listening to this, this speaker on the internet and... Um, and his name was Cameron, but I also told you that I, I usually like to listen to the whole message and sometimes twice before I recommend it to you. So I listened to the rest of the message and the man was not legitimate, he, in my opinion. He has a spirit guide. At the beginning he was very interesting and he really sounded like he might have been hearing from God, but then he sort of flopped in the middle and he said a few things that made it evident that he had a spirit guide. So I wanted to tell you one more time in, a, in an attempt, because I know the truth, the carnal mind blocks the truth, so I tell you things many times uh, in the hope of, um, of, of having it this stick to you, that the, the doctrine of Christ has been published. The doctrine of Christ has been published. We're publishing it. That means everything that disagreed, everything that the church has ever preached that disagrees with the doctrine of Christ is now error because the next grade of truth is available. See? And the doctrine of Christ says that there is, there is hope that the kingdom of God is coming to the earth. And I'm hoping that it will, it will rise on the ashes of what, however God is going to punish this country because this country needs to be punished. It's only righteous that this country should be punished. We've done some very evil things. Our government has done some very evil things. Okay, and they're getting more. Well, I don't know that they're getting more and more evil, but they're being exposed. You know, so I'm having two thoughts in my mind at the same time now. Um, I want I want to talk about Halliburton and the child slave sex trade. If you can help me to remember that. So, what you need to look for when somebody tells you that they're a prophet of the Lord, and this man he mentioned Isaiah. A couple of times he mentioned all Lord Jesus Christ once, he mentioned Isaiah once, a particular chapter in Isaiah, which I didn't know what it meant, I would have had to have looked it up myself, but it didn't sound familiar. And, and what he was saying didn't sound anything at all like the doctrine of Christ, you see. So if you're looking for a true, a true prophet of God, you should be looking for at least some strain of the doctrine of Christ in it, something that will that will reverberate or touch what your knowledge of the doctrine of Christ is. And I don't see anybody out there doing that. You know. So that doesn't mean that they're not bringing forth truth like Tom Horn and Steve Quayle about the giants they sing 
They're saying giants are going to appear on the earth again, and the demons are going to be walking, the aliens are going to be walking down the street. It may be true, but brethren, that's not the doctrine of God. See? That's the information about what's coming upon the earth. But that's not the word of God. That is not the doctrine of God. The doctrine of God is what God is doing. See? The doctrine of God is what God is doing with his church. Now, of course, God is in control of everything. So if there are going to be aliens walking down the street, that's the, the Jehovah's sowing and reaping judgment. That's true. But, but the doctrine of God is about God's deliverance. The doctrine of God is about God's righteousness and his justice. And you look at a prophet like Isaiah, he's balanced. He talks about God's judgment and God's destruction on a disobedient Israel. And then in the next chapter, he talks about deliverance and restoration and the great things that God will do in the future. How much he loves us and how he will heal us and deliver us. And, and how our land will, our land will, we will inherit the land which is our bodies and all of the good things that he promises. So it's, it's a balance. Isaiah is a balance. You listen to somebody that they're just talking about destruction, some things where it's not coming from God. Maybe coming up from a knowledge of the word that they've, that they've read, but it's not a balanced message. Really. So if you go out to Halliburton and the child sex uh, trade, the first thought that came into my mind I also wanted to tell you about Michael Savage's um, prophecy, which he was even surprised that he said it about President Obama. We'll talk about that next. Uh, it, it shouldn't be a shock that Halliburton is now being revealed as being involved in the child sex trafficking trade. If you believe, if it hasn't gone in this ear and gone out that ear because it's so painful, if you have retained a knowledge of the, the sex slaves that there, there are so many people saying are, are taken into, uh, into Washington, that one, uh, one account that I read of, the little boy drew a picture of the, of the master bedroom of the White House. He said he was there as a, as a sex slave that I've shown you videos about it, I've told you about it, about the MK uh, mind control, how thousands of children are disappearing every year, how some of them are captured and put in cages and made, and made into sex slaves, and that they've been in Washington, and that the people, and that you, know, you heard about the, the Bohemian Grove, and all of the, uh, the paganism that goes on there, and it's, they're supposed to be, unholy sexual activity there also. Well, well the